So good evening, future Eagles. Today we will have our presentation from biology and chemistry at the great Coppin State University. Today we have Dr. Giroux, Dr. Nesbitt, and Dr. Hedge um, They will be sharing with you um, information about our biology and chemistry um, major. If you have any questions, you can feel free to put your um, questions in the chat box and we will be sure to um, get them answered for you. And I'm gonna turn it over now. Thank you, Janil. Um, welcome to the biology and chemistry programs at Kappen State. Uh, welcome our future students to the Department of Natural Sciences. My name is uh, Mintasinot Jiru. I'm the chair of the Department of Natural Sciences. And with me today, I have the biology program coordinator, Dr. Kavita Hagde, and then also uh, Dr. Fred Nesbitt, who is a chemistry program coordinator. So we are going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we do here and then uh, how our students join and then enjoy uh, the programs that we have and where we are, they are also headed after Cap and State. Uh, so the Department of Natural Sciences is housed in the newly built uh, Science and Technology Center, uh, which is a high-tech, uh, state-of-the-art uh, facility uh, we have uh, state-of-art in instrumentation, uh, both for research and teaching, which you may not really find in other even bigger schools because ours is the latest uh, and newly built in 2013-2014. So in the next uh, few minutes, uh, we are going to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the pro programs that we have under the Department of Natural Sciences, uh, as I mentioned earlier. We have a degree program in biology and then uh, another degree program in chemistry. The biology program coordinator, uh, Dr. Hagde, will give you highlights on uh, the uh, biology program. Dr. Hagde. Thank you, Dr. Jiru. Uh, so I am Dr. Kavita Hagde. As Dr. Jiru already mentioned, I am the biology program coordinator here at the Department of Natural Sciences. So we have uh, a, a biology and life sciences program. So the degree that uh, students get after they finish their four year uh, or the requirements met for the bachelor's degree, what they get is the biology and life sciences degree. So um, the biology and life sciences program uh, has two options, meaning uh, if students do uh, some of the health professions uh, like medicine or pharmacy or physician assistant programs after uh, graduation, then uh, they are advised to take the applied sciences concentration, which is within the biology and life sciences program. But of course, uh, if not, uh, they are if they are not interested in any of these, uh, uh, the options that are list that are shown here, the pre-med or pre-pharmacy or pre pre-PA, then they can always choose to go the traditional way, the traditional biology and life sciences uh, program. So, uh, uh, in addition to the undergrad program, uh, we are also uh, introducing the master's and certificate programs in advanced molecular biology and biochemistry. So that's another option uh, that students will have after they graduate from Coppin, uh, you know, as a biology or a chemistry major. Uh, we have, um, you know, many uh, natural science students. Uh, again, many of them are biology, many of them are chemistry students. So overall, uh, our students have, uh, you know, specific goals uh, when they enroll in the science programs. They already have something in mind as to what they want to do after they graduate. Mm -hmm. So some of them might want to be, uh, you know, want to become doctors. Some of them want to become pharmacists or they want to become dentists or you know, physician assistants, uh, veterinary medicine, etc. So in fact, uh, there are, uh, you know, over the past uh, many years now, we have our students who have graduated from Coppin. They have, in fact, pursued all these professions that you have, that you are seeing on this slide on the right. So some of our students have been accepted to medical school. They are I, they are already in the medical school, uh, you know, uh, uh, pursuing, uh, uh, you know, eventually wanting to become doctors. And many of them are in pharmacy school, uh, the PA program, veterinary medicine, and graduate school. So many of them want to do pure basic science research. So many of them have, in fact, opted to go into masters in biology programs or PhD programs as well. So uh, there are a lot of different options that students uh, have after uh, 
after they graduate from Copin, and one of the main reasons why they have been successful in getting accepted to all of these graduates and graduate and professional schools is because we are preparing our students uh, to be competitive in the real world. And you know, you have to compete with uh, students from all over the uh, United States, not only United States, all over the world, in fact. And uh, our undergrad program is tailored to uh, to assist students in uh, you know in in uh, being competitive in uh, you know in getting ready for in prepping for the uh, admission tests uh, interviews um, you know all kinds of uh, things that you'll have to undergo when you are uh, applying for graduate or professional schools. So our uh, degree program, undergrad degree programs, them uh, they are all very um, tailored towards that end. So we we don't want just you to be going out with a uh, bachelor's in biology and life sciences. We do want you to be equipped with the necessary tools, uh, necessary skills and knowledge uh, to be uh, able to competitively uh, to, or to have a competitive edge to apply to all these uh, professional and grad schools and getting accepted as well. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, um, before we uh, head into the uh, chemistry program, one thing that uh, I would also add to what uh, Dr. Hagdi just mentioned is uh, our programs are tailored. What this means is when students graduate from our program, they are ready to join those professional programs, be it uh, medical school, dentistry and what have you. Through the program redesign, uh, what we did is to include the prerequisite courses of those professional programs into our curriculum. So by the time students graduate you know, with a degree in biology, they don't have to sit out and then take those prerequisite courses at all. Uh, so it's like a combo deal that you get. Uh, uh, on one hand, you have your degree, on the other hand, uh, you have already fulfilled the prerequisite courses for the professional programs that uh, you that you plan to uh, to join. So uh, that's what I wanted to add, uh, Dr. Nesbitt. Go ahead and then uh, highlight your chemistry program, please. Uh, good evening, students. Thank you, Dr. Jeru. Uh, my name is Dr. Fred Nesbitt. I'm one of the chemistry professors here at Coppin State University, and our program consists of a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and students have uh, the uh, option to go into a concentration of biochem or uh, computational uh, chemistry. Our program is a four-year uh, program. Usually during the first year, year, students take about 40 credits in GER courses and then they start their, their major uh, courses. And we do uh, emphasize a lot of uh, research. We try to give our students uh, uh, hands-on experience. You'll see in some of the uh, upcoming uh, slides, you know, some of our labs and also uh, some of the equipment that we train students on so that when they finish our program, they'll be ready uh, to go into a graduate school. For example, many of our students uh, go into the area of uh, pharmacy um, many of them go and, and get masters or work in industry or government. And so we try to train them so that they're ready uh, for whatever job market you know they're trying to get into. Uh, we also try to make sure that they are uh, uh, possible to have internships and get as much work experience you know as, as possible, especially with the equipment, uh, learning various uh, techniques that will help them to get into, the uh, graduate schools and professional schools once they uh, or once they leave Coppin. Uh, we do have a variety of state-of-the-art equipment and laboratories. You'll see pictures of those uh, upcoming. You also see uh, names of of our students and where where they are being uh, placed. Uh, we love you know having you to come here and being able to take a part in shaping your future uh, to get you ready for this uh, upcoming uh, job market and some of the challenges that you will face uh, in the future. 
Yeah, um, one of the beauties of uh, our programs is uh, all of them are, all courses are hands-on. Uh, experiential learning is a big thing here at Kappen, specifically at uh, the Department of Natural Sciences. And we have seen uh, the advantage of having you know, hands-on training um, simply uh, because we have seen students uh, after their degree in chemistry and biology, they pursue directly into PhD programs uh, without even going through master's program. Uh, those, uh, you know, schools see uh, the rigorous thing that we provide to our students and uh, they see that they are well prepared, both uh, knowledge and then also uh, skill wise. So they give them PhD programs, uh, the, you know, with scholarships and Dr. Nesbitt and Dr. Hagde will highlight in later slides um, you know some of the names that uh, you probably can can see for yourself to to believe that this is uh, this can happen. Um, now, what makes our our program uh, so unique? Uh, you know, compared to other schools. You know, as uh, future students, you have the option to go to big school and mid-sized schools or smaller schools. Uh, happen being a smaller school, the advantage that we have is uh, our class sizes are small. Uh, maximum, maximum, uh, you would be 24 students per class. Uh, and that opportunity to know our students by first name sometimes. Um, we can provide them the support that they need. Uh, we can provide them the nurturing that they need. In fact, one of the questions that uh, we always ask when students join uh, our department is, what would you like to become? Once we know what their end game is, end goal is, then we just work towards that goal. Uh, so we have that uh, advising system that helps them bridge uh, to the destination because you know, with undergraduate degree nowadays, what can you really do much about, right? It is just a bridge to the next chapter, which is either a graduate school uh, or professional schools or what. Uh, so our small you know, class size uh, help us to give excellent advising and then also support system to, uh, to our students. And as I mentioned earlier also, Undergraduate research is a big thing here at Kappen. Uh, as I indicated in our first slide, uh, we have a state of art uh, facility here. Uh, our teaching and then research labs are well furnished uh, and uh, we require students to actually undertake a semester long uh, research in their senior year. Uh, in the fall of their senior year, they undertake uh, hands on research and then in the spring semester of their graduation year, uh, they give presentation, oral presentations, just like master's thesis. Uh, so what this means is, you know, undergraduate research is a big thing. We value building uh, skills. Uh, and then when you say skills, holistic skills, you know, it is a public speaking skills. It is the analytical skills uh, and computational skills. These are all built in our curriculum and uh, when our students graduate, uh, they are well equipped and then they are uh, well prepared. So um, one of the uh, facilities that uh, that we have is uh, this collaboration for our students. Um, you know, normally the uh, you know in other schools, what you see is students finish their you know classes, then they run back home. Uh, and then, you know, they don't get the support system that uh, they deserve. Uh, but in our building, we have this kind of collaboration areas where uh, students can uh, wirelessly you know, uh, 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 connect to the digital monitors and uh, do homework together, assignments together. And then if they needed help, they just, you know, walk to our offices and then, you know, one of us uh, would go out and then, you know, assist them. So. We believe in uh, assistance uh, and we believe in a tutoring system. We have a good tutorial 
uh, especially on those uh, gatekeeper courses like you know uh, chemistry, biochemistry, and math. Uh, so this is where everything happens. This is where everything. Um, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, sample classroom that uh, we have. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, maximum is 24 students per class, um, and uh, it is uh, well equipped with technology, uh, and it also uh, helps uh, you know, group work within the classroom, where in fact some of the other classrooms even have desktops. Uh, so this is just to show you that uh, uh, the facility that we have is uh, uh, really a class A type, which would help uh, uh, train our students in the skills that, uh, that they, they need. Um, Dr. Nesbitt now will tell us a little bit about the uh, research facility that uh, we have and then some of the undergraduate uh, research experience. Dr. Nesbitt. Hi, so this slide shows some of our uh, research lab. The one shown now is the Center for Nanotechnology. That's one of our uh, centers. And so this has a multitude of state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, students get to work alongside professors on various uh, projects. Uh, this one in particular focuses on nanotechnology, uh, trying to develop new types of dye synthesized cells. And students uh, learn how the equipment works, how to build the cells, uh, participate in publishing the work. So by the time uh, you know, many of the students graduate, they may uh, already be a part of uh, one or two uh, publications, and that can be very helpful in that next step trying to get into graduate school, uh, you know, moving to the next uh, level. And so uh, this uh, particular research center has been very successful with helping uh, numerous students, not only college students, but many times in the summer, uh, high school students come in and participate uh, also. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, this is another of our research center, our organic synthesis lab. Again, students uh, can work in this lab alongside professors doing uh, a research. Uh, you take uh, two semesters of organic uh, chemistry, and then uh, much of that knowledge can be applied in this uh, a laboratory synthesizing new materials, uh, characterizing those materials, and publishing uh, that uh, those results. We also try to have our students uh, take internships where possible, and uh, we also uh, really emphasize getting this hands-on training, learning these various techniques because they can make a big difference when you're trying to get into a graduate school, uh, uh, trying to get into some job in industry and government, you know, what you know is, is very uh, important. Uh, we also have uh, other research centers that deal with inorganic uh, chemistry. And so students learn how to synthesize and characterize inorganic materials and also in the area of chemistry, where students learn how to use uh, computers to uh, simulate and uh, predict uh, reactions, structures of materials, and many times those uh, those types of calculations can also blend with experimental observations. So students can see the connection between not only working in a laboratory but also using computer techniques to uh, predict properties of a variety of materials. And Dr. Hackney? Yes, thank you, Dr. Nesbitt, for the uh, chemistry uh, overview. So uh, just like Dr. Nesbitt described regarding the um, you know, chemistry research labs, um, uh, here what you're looking at is uh, the a biology uh, teaching lab, in fact. Uh, this is the anatomy and physiology uh, teaching lab. So you can see uh, just some of the models that are out there on the benches, but we have many, many uh, anatomy and models for our students to, you know, to to study during their a &P courses. So again, that's just one of the teaching labs. But again, all of our teaching labs are well equipped uh, with uh, all the equipment and instrumentation that is needed to perform 
uh, hand or hands on experiments. So that's uh, as Dr. Jiru already mentioned and even Dr. Nisbet mentioned. So that's one of the key things that uh, we actually emphasize on that all students should be uh, getting that hands on experience because, uh, you know, learning uh, by doing hands on is the best. Uh, you, you know, theory is fine, but learning, you know, doing, doing hands on really, um, you know, makes you more uh, proficient in the in the theoretical part as well. So um, in addition to the teaching labs, of course, we also have a research labs. So um, all of our biology faculty are also involved in research. So uh, this is uh, on, the, on the slide here, you're looking at uh, one of the biology research lab. This is specifically a research lab, which is uh, working on uh, vision and eye. So this is the ophthalmic research lab. Basically, we are looking at uh, you know, eye diseases, how they happen and, you know, mechanisms, etc. But just like this, I mean, you can already see there are students already involved, you know, these. This is just a very small fraction of students who have undergone biomedical research training in this lab, but there are, you know, as I mentioned, there have been, you know, many more, at least four or five every year. And uh, similar to this one, we have other biology research labs. So we have a research lab uh, who that works on malaria. It's a malaria research lab. Um, we also have uh, uh, research going on uh, with uh, developmental biology, um, you know, as a main focus. So there are uh, plenty of opportunities for students to do hands-on biomedical research uh, in any of the biology biology faculty research labs. So they get to do uh, the biochemical assays. They get to do all, you know all the molecular biology experiments. They use the molecular biotechnology equipment and instruments. So hands on research, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is, you know, is the best to best way to learn your subject. So that's the good thing. And many of these students uh, who have, in fact, gone through these um, uh, biology as well as chemistry research labs have also published even before they graduated. So that gives a good, uh, you know, good thing on the resume as well. So this is a list of uh, again, this is just an example. We just highlighted some of the students who have, in fact, uh, you know, been very successful in uh, uh, getting accepted to school of pharmacy, veterinary medicine, medical school and master's and PhD program. So as I said, this is just a small sample. Uh, we just wanted to uh, let you know that anyone can do uh, you know, get to this stage. Uh, you know, once they, they were all um, graduated from Copin at different times during the last uh, four or five years. Uh, but again, there are uh, many more. Um, this is just a sample. So uh, yeah, that's what you're looking at. Some of these uh, biology uh, students uh, who you know who have gone on to do, uh, you know, different uh, 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 professional and um, uh, grad school, uh, you know, programs. Thank you, Dr. Hagdi. Yeah, uh, you know, this is just a snapshot of uh, students, you know, uh, who joined either, you know, pharmacy school and then vet medicine and then, you know, biomedical programs and, uh, and, and whatnot. What gave them uh, this opportunity is the very strong curriculum that, uh, that we have, uh, that we highlighted earlier. And then uh, the uh, the hands on, you know, experiential learning uh, approach that that we have, uh, you know, in many bigger schools, uh, it would be more of a demonstration than a hands on training. Uh, you, you know, the professor or his teaching assistant will only demonstrate from the podium and then that's how you would learn just because of the size, uh, because one class is like, you know, 250 students. But when the students are well trained, um, well nurtured uh, that we do best here at Kappen, then this is the end result. Uh, you see them go uh, everywhere uh, in their journey. And Dr. Uh, Nesbitt is going to highlight some of uh, our chemistry graduates and where they are. Dr. Nesbitt. Uh, yes, we uh, we uh, here here is some of our uh, chemistry uh, graduates and many of the students when they finish the program, many of them will go on to graduate school or uh, some may go into uh, industry or government. So here are the names of just a few. Uh, uh, Nathan McLean, he just graduated. Uh, he is uh, in graduate school now. Others are in uh, nuclear engineering at University of Missouri, uh, University of Florida uh, graduate school. And so we try to uh, give our students the, the knowledge, the hands-on training, 
so that uh, when they are ready to uh, graduate, you know, that they're able to get into uh, good schools. Uh, very early on, our students are assigned an advisor, and that advisor worked with you uh, throughout your program to make sure you stay on course for, uh, stay on target for the courses that you need uh, to help you graduate on time. And then many times students may be working with that same advisor, you know, doing research and ultimately turn out of uh, publications. But those advisors, as well as other teachers, will also write letters of recommendation to help you get into uh, the graduate schools, the pharmacy schools, and the engineering schools, you know, that, you know, that you may be applying to. And so we take it very seriously uh, in terms of helping our students uh, when they, you know, when they come in to try to see, you know, that they graduate uh, from our programs, but also move on to have successful uh, careers. So that's a responsibility that we take very seriously. And then at the end, our end goal is uh, to see all of our students graduate on time. Uh, the, uh, the pledge that we have is a four year graduation. Uh, although in many schools now, a six year graduation has become the new normal. Uh, but we push our students to finish in four years, within four years and uh, we prepare them for the next journey uh, because as I mentioned earlier, the undergraduate degree is just a bridge to your final destination. So we work hard uh, and we have, uh, uh, you have our commitment uh, to, to make sure that uh, you get where uh, you wanna be. Uh, all we need is uh, your commitment. Uh, the faculty is ready, uh, our doors are wide open we can't wait to see you um, in, in August uh, and then receive you here uh, because at the end of the day, what we want is happy graduates, but more importantly, the long list that Dr. Hagde and then Dr. Nesbitt showed you, we want to see your names added into that long list uh, of Kappen alumni. That is the kind of place that, that we have for you. So we hope to see you soon and we'll be happy to have any questions so that we can explain uh, more in detail. Thank you, Janil. Any question you may have? Any questions? Janil, you're muted. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so a lot of students do ask questions about COVID and knowing that the students have to do labs, um, how are we um, ensuring that students are staying safe, staying safe during this pandemic? Um, I know that we have some um, like a hybrid um, curriculum right now where some students are taking classes online. How are we ensuring their safety, it's, especially when it comes to doing labs for biology and chemistry? Yeah, uh, we take COVID very seriously. Uh, and mainly because we understand the science of it, right? We are biologists and we are chemists and uh, we take it very seriously. And uh, uh, we were so well prepared for this fall semester uh, in terms of safety precautions. And what we have done, uh, unlike many other schools, is to make our programs a hybrid program uh, so that uh, we know that virtual learning is not the best learning for every student or for all students. So we designed or redesigned our curriculum in such a way that the lectures are uh, virtual, uh, but the labs are hybrid. Uh, so you come to the lab uh, face to face. And then in each lab, what we have done is normally the capacity is 24 students. Uh, we split the lab into two parts. So at a given time, only 12 students come to the lab. And when those 12 students come to the lab, we have built plexi partitions between students so that uh, the six feet, uh, all CDC guidelines are actually respected. Uh, and there will be no physical contact, no paper exchange even between the instructor and then the students. Um, sanitizing between labs is a a requirement. When we finish one lab, 
before continuing to the next one, the rooms are uh, uh, disinfected and then fully sanitized. Uh, and then uh, in our labs, both students and then uh, faculty uh, wear not only uh, a face mask, but face shield in addition. Uh, so for us, uh, uh, COVID is serious. The safety of our students is, is, is of much importance. That's why we have probably the low count of you know, cases on campus compared to any other student. I'm sure Jalil can add here uh, into, the, uh, into the figures. Yes, we have kept our students very safe. We haven't had any huge outbreaks like some campuses. We didn't even have to shut down throughout the fall semester. Students went home when they were scheduled to go home. So very, very um, happy to say that we made, you know, the proper protocol, put the proper protocols in place to ensure the safety of our students. Um, I do have um, some, some more questions. Um, the other is when a student is, wants the students in your program, do they graduate with two degrees in biochemistry if they're interested in pre-med or do they just graduate with one or the other? I'm sure uh, either Dr. Hagde or uh, Dr. Nesbitt can add this, this question. If a student comes uh, with a degree or with a choice in biology degree only, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. under the biology, we have those concentrations like the pre-med and then pre-pharmacy. So they can uh, choose one of the concentrations uh, but their degree will be a degree in biology and life sciences. Uh, but their concentration will be one of their choices, either pre-med or pre-pharmacy. Uh, likewise, in chemistry, if a student wants to do chemistry, we have concentrations in chemistry, uh, like computational chemistry or biochemistry. Okay. And then students would receive a degree in chemistry with that concentration. I'm sure uh, Dr. Nesbitt can also add a little on this as well as uh, Dr. Uh, and sometimes we actually have students that want to major in both areas, chemistry and biology. A number of students uh, uh, major in both. It will take them a bit longer uh, you know, to finish, but we do have uh, students that major in chemistry and biology or some other combinations. It's chemistry and mathematics. So some of those students that we were uh, presenting their names, uh, some of them are double majors. Awesome. Um, I know that I mentioned in my little snippet, my little snippet video, and we showed some pictures of staff who have um, done some awesome and amazing things within the department and they've won some awards. Can you, and as well as the building, the building has won some awards. So can you talk about that a little bit? Because we have a state-of-the-art building, guys. So if you haven't, you need to go to YouTube. We have videos up of the building. They've showed you pictures of the building. It's an amazing facility. So can you talk about the um, staff awards, um, the research that they may have done, and our building facilities? Uh, sure. Uh, probably I will talk about the, uh, the building. Uh, that's my favorite thing all the time. Uh, you know, we moved to this uh, building in 20... 14 now, uh, end of 2014. And uh, this building was a blueprint of our own imagination. Uh, you know, it was not like a contractor who came and then just, you know, gave us this building. Uh, when we were, you know, given the money, uh, then we sat down together, many of us in this call even, and then we said, what is the kind of building uh, that is future looking, that is modern, latest, that is, you know, student friendly that we would like to have. Uh, so it was like our wish kind of thing that we got. So, you know, the labs are designed the way we want it. The instrumentation is the way we planned it. And the research that we do, the centers that we have is something that we planned eight, nine years ago. Uh, so. It's really one of the model buildings. And by the way, some other schools are already taking the blueprint of that this. That's what my next thing. So those schools have modeled their buildings off of <laughs> your vision. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but that was ours, right? And that is still ours. And it only shows you um, how wonderful this facility is. And many of us really spend countless hours. You know, for us, 
it is not nine to five kind of thing here. Uh, we spend countless hours because the research that we do is not a normal, normal kind of research. And some of the thing is really groundbreaking and then advanced research um, in biomedical areas, uh, just like how Dr. Hagde mentioned, for example, in the uh, biomedical uh, sciences, she has this ophthalmic lab. Uh, Dr. Hagde received this uh, Elkins Professorship Award from the University System of Maryland, uh, in fact, twice. Um, Yay, yeah. <laughs> and then in chemistry also we have uh, this center for nanotechnology which uh, dr nesbitt presented once again uh, they are doing this uh, groundbreaking research in uh, disensitized solar cells uh, trying to improve the efficiency of these solar panels and uh, again, uh, Dr. Urin and, and also Dr. Sobi in areas of organic synthesis. They both received this uh, Elkins professorship also in the last four or five years. Um, I, we have a faculty who has received a patent uh, from the U.S. Patent Office uh, the last few years in chemistry. Uh, you know, the list is long, uh, but for the, just the interest of time, uh, I would just say we would like this experience uh, to be imparted, uh, you know, in our students. Uh, one thing that we offer them in addition to the um, uh, hands-on research and the knowledge that we said is that role model that they can look up and say, I can become you in, <laughs> not in thousand years, right? In okay. five years, in 10 years. That's the kind of mentorship that uh, they will be getting because of uh, the experience here. Any addition, my colleagues? I wanted to add something here. So uh, Dr. Jiru forgot to, he was too humble. Uh, I want to add uh, here, Janelle, that uh, uh, he has his own uh, greenhouse where he does his environmental science research. And that's, in fact, a very important uh, component of the department as well. So he has also uh, been training uh, students in the environmental science projects for many years now. So the, uh, although we were not able to include all pictures that we have for the research labs, but that was uh, I in fact uh, mentioned to Dr. Jiru that we should have one uh, one such picture, but you know we were short of time. You guys are doing but in any case, so that also so needs possible. to be highlighted. So all yeah, many of the faculty have you know uh, research grants as well. So uh, that's something uh, also that you know everybody should know that we have funding. We have collaborations with uh, uh, sister institutes as well. So, you know, I have a collaboration, for example, with the University of Maryland. Dr. Jiru has uh, collaborations with other institutes. So there are many faculty who have who are doing collaborative research, plus the their own, uh, you know, ongoing um, in-house research uh, in the at Coppin. Sorry to have interrupted Dr. Jiru. I wanted to make sure that this gets. <laughs> no, no, that's a wonderful thing like you guys are so humble about everything that you accomplished but you're making some major strides in higher education for the Kaufman University for the students and so I think it needs to be highlighted they say Pop normally doesn't talk about himself right <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah but still I mean for some things like you know we have to at least let them know that you know we have this environmental science yeah. thing we have this you know, there are different things. It's just not because environmental science is like a kind of a marriage between biology and chemistry, you know. So there are yeah. so many things that are, you know, you take a little bit of biology, you take a little bit of chemistry, you take a little bit of physics also in environmental science. So there's a lot of, it's like an interdisciplinary uh, field. So we do need to mention that, Dr. Jiru. <laughs> and <laughs> recently an announcement was made about a grant with NASA, so can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Janelle, um, great things are happening at Kaufman. They are. Great. I was so excited when I saw that post. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, uh, that was uh, a hard work of uh, like six institutions together with, you know, Kaufman also, you know, spearheading uh, the initiative uh, and it's uh, over six million that uh, we got for the next five years. And the focus is student training, really. Uh, it's the NASA grant that we received, especially uh, for students who would like to pursue STEM. Uh, so there will be scholarships. And one of the cool things that we have in that uh, project is 
uh, we have uh, eight weeks of summer internship for our undergraduates. And this uh, internship will be administered at NASA. Uh, so students will get to fly NASA aircraft uh, and then measure those environmental parameters uh, for eight hours. Can you believe eight That's hours awesome. of flight? I think I probably be scared, but that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm a> science student. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, th 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 there is more. There is more, mm -hmm. and uh, even recently we received a NASA, I mean, an NSF grant to start a center of excellence research in science and technology. It's called Crest Center. In the country, there are few Crest centers that focus on, especially on studies like environmental contaminants. So we received that planning grant uh, about three months ago now, uh, and then this spring now, our students will be starting their undergraduate research with our faculty. And the big hope is, We'll be getting uh, five years of this uh, grant continued so that we have a Kappen Quest Center. Yes. That is amazing. Amazing. There are so many great things happening in Kappen. And I know that in the news, you may hear about certain HBCUs, but I think that people are really starting that, you know, to Kappen and realize that there are so many amazing staff and amazing faculty who are here to, you know, push our students and motivate them and nurture them to pursue their dreams and goals. And this department is definitely one of those. And it's amazing that you still keep in touch with your, I don't know if the students realize this when I were watching the presentation, but you, in order to know where your students are going to school once they graduate from Coppin, you have to keep in contact with them. And so you wanna ask your other school that you may be you know, seeking information from, ask them, do you keep in contact with your students? Do you know where they're going? Because if you're not, you're not keeping in contact with them, then you won't know. And so that means that you have mentored them and built relationships with your students and it shows. And so if you're looking for that kind of nurtured environment, students definitely consider Calvin. For us, the relationship is personal, you mm -hmm. know. And when I say, you know, uh, role models and, and uh, you know, father figure and then mother figure, it, it carries a lot of weight. Uh, and we know how important this is you know, for our students, because once upon a time, we were students too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we know how important it is uh, to get mentors. Uh, so, you know, Dr. Nesbitt in chemistry area, uh, he has been here, you know, long enough uh, <laughs> to mentor many, many, many students. Uh, and some of them are in senior positions in research, uh, in government agencies. Uh, likewise, in the biology area, I know the last 15 years since uh, we joined Kappen, we have seen a lot. Uh, so when I say the relationship that we have with our students is personal, whenever they get some things, even after graduation, like five years, they still come back to celebrate with us. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, there was this student who sent uh, an email to Dr. Hagdi uh, when he got accepted to this medical school. It's as if it was like his birthday that day, <laughs> right? He was so happy. And then, you know, we share and celebrate, uh, uh, you know, the news and their accomplishments. So that is one thing that we offer in addition to really what, you know, many other programs offer. Relationships are really very personal. I'm texting. Um, ladies, I just put in the chat box, but if you have any questions, you can definitely feel free to put them in the chat box. We have a, just a few more seconds before we end this session. I'll just give you a second to see if you have any questions. Or if you want like, you can take yourself off of mute and you can ask those questions. Will the class size change due to COVID? That's the question that popped in the chat. Yeah, the lab, the lab class size uh, changed. Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, although students, uh, uh, you know, enrolled uh, into a class of like 24, but when we, uh, you know, uh, uh, teach them in, in the lab, then that becomes 50%. 12 students come for this week 
So the remaining 12 will still be attending the lab virtually. Uh, so they will not be missing that week's lab. Uh, we have recorded all our labs. You know, I have the greatest admiration to our, our faculty here and then lab personnel who really spend their summertime recording all these labs uh, so that when students are, you know, at home and virtually, they could uh, still attend the class and then get, you know, the lab sessions. Uh, so the next week, uh, the, you know, the students who were at home will come to the face-to-face -face lab and then they swap. And then that way uh, we give both the face-to-face -face experience and uh, uh, and then the virtual experience for our students. But, uh, you know, at the end, we still have 24 students in, in the class, right? Uh, so that was not impacted. It's only we, we made it uh, a requirement that only 50% of the students uh, come to the lab. So this will continue for the spring semester. Uh, that is how we plan the spring semester. Hopefully, come fall 2021, when our future students join, you know, COVID will be behind us. Yes. That, you know, we rather wish to see you face to face, really. That is how we can best teach science, right? Uh, in the lab, you have to feel it, you have to synthesize it. Uh, so, while we don't know what is in the fall 2021, we know what is for spring 2021, uh, which is going to be a hybrid program with again, you know, all the CDC protocols uh, still, you know, complied uh, and then uh, with maximum safety being our, our priority. Awesome. So I just was, wanted to, oh, I'm sorry. Go I just wanted to add something here, um, if you don't mind. Go ahead, oh, please. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say that, uh, yes, uh, labs are reduced capacity, but despite the reduced capacity, we are, uh, you know, half capacity labs. We you know, Students come on alternate uh, weeks, just like Dr. Jiru mentioned. But uh, in addition to the plexiglass and, you know, partitions, etc., uh, you know, in, in addition to the mask, uh, face shields are mandatory for everyone who, who is in the lab. So that those are additional, you know, that's an additional uh, precaution that we have taken. I think that that has gone a long way in protecting, um, you know, ourselves from this infection. So just mm -hmm. wanted to add that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Dr. Nesbitt, oh, any you. last word? Um, no, I just uh, wanted to uh, thank the students and uh, I hope that we, uh, you will select Coffin. We'd love to have you come either in chemistry or biology. We'd love to take part in shaping your future. So thank you. Thank you, guys. If a student wants to reach out to you or join you on social media, because you have a social media page now, where can they find you on social media first? <laughs> so uh, the department uh, social media uh, site is Department of Capen State Department of Natural Sciences. Uh, I will send you the link, uh, and uh, probably you can post it and share it, uh, Janelle. Okay. But it is, you know, Kappen State Department of Natural Sciences on Facebook and then Instagrams. Uh, I don't think we have a personal kind of thing uh, that's going on, but uh, <laughs> we are very active on the department. Uh, You're trying. So that's all that matters. I'm just appreciative of you trying. <laughs> because you remember our conversation a few weeks ago, right? Uh, yes. so we have that, and more importantly, we have also the department website uh, at Kappen, and, and uh, there are resources. There are resources in terms of the program requirement, uh, the plan of study, uh, and uh, we gave you only highlight. But, you know, the majority of the information is also on the department website, so you can go ahead and then, you know, uh, uh, explore uh, what is available. But more importantly, if you have any questions also, our phone number is on our website, and then uh, we can also put our uh, email addresses here. We are available. Uh, we are just a phone call away. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are very much accessible here. Yes, you are. I thank you guys so much for joining this session. And I thank you for all of the information that you shared. And students, you can still apply today. You can just go to the launch page and click apply now. If you would like to schedule an appointment with myself, you can schedule, I'm sorry, actually, let me show my face so you guys can see me. <laughs>
that would make more sense, right? Let me see if I can get this right. Okay, there I am. So if you guys would like to um, apply, you can apply now through the apply now button on the launch page of the Open House website. You can also book an appointment with me if you choose, and I will answer all of your questions. My name is Janelle Harris, and I thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you, doctors. <laughs> thank you, Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. Thank, cool. thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Yes. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.